let's start adjusting type by learning some useful tricks for sizing type without compromising your intended end result, unnecessary mental acrobatics, or worst of all, risking losing your train of thought. Remember that if you're working with point type objects, resizing the object resizes the type. The most visual and intuitive way to get text to the right size, particularly if the right size is to fit an existing space, is to resize the point type object with the black arrow selection tool. With that tool selected, highlight the point type object and drag one of the bounding box's control corners to resize the object and text. Hold the shift key while you do that to resize proportionally. The font size and any other measurement field accepts partial values as well as whole values. You aren't limited to sizing type in whole points. You can enter decimal values to the second decimal place, the hundredths, and precisely size type. Just enter 12.5 or 11.75. This can be a lifesaver when one size is too small, but the next whole value point size up causes the text to no longer fit the space you need it to fit. You know you don't have to use points for type measurement. Blasphemy, you may cry. Type is always set in points. Why would I even think of type in any measurement system other than points, right? Well, how about if you're trying to fit type to a specific space and you don't know the size of that space in points? Most of the time, we don't measure anything but type and strokes in points. Let's say we want to make these letters vertically fit this space. The transform panel tells us that the space is 1.365 inches in height. Do you know what that would be in points? Let's see. There are 72 points in an inch, so that's 72 plus 72 times 3.65. Oh, forget it. There's no need for such distracting calculations when Illustrator will let me enter the inches measurement in the font size field. 1.365 space I N and tab or return. Illustrator simultaneously does the conversion from inches to points and resizes the text to that new measurement. No muss, no fuss, no risk of a deadline-addled brain forgetting to carry the one. This trick works with any measurement system Illustrator supports, which includes points, picas, pixels, inches, millimeters, and centimeters. Keep in mind also that not all fonts are created equal. 1.365 inches tall in one font may look very different than 1.365 inches tall in another. An even more useful way to resize type is to resize it relatively. Let's say you have this text and you want to quickly double its size. That's 98.28 points times two, carry the one. How did I get seven for an answer? How was that even possible? Forget it. I'm, I'm not doing this. If I was good at math, I wouldn't be an artist. Instead of multiplying and dividing font sizes, just let Illustrator do it. Enter the percentage in the font size field. Thus, here I'm entering 200% and then hitting return or enter or tabbing out of the field. Just like with a different measurement system value, Illustrator does the math and affects the change in one step. The same trick works the other way, dividing font size. Let's take the same text and make it one third its current size. Type into the font size field 33 and the percent symbol. Enter, return, or tab, and there you go. No math for you required. Illustrator does it all. Speaking of math, you can do real math in the fields. Let's say you forgot to change the default letting in the preferences and you want to use 140% letting instead of the default 120%. You could figure out what 140% of the font size is or let Illustrator do the math instead. In the letting field, type the font size, an asterisk to represent multiplication, and 1.4, which is the whole number equivalent of 140%, because we want 100%, 1, 
plus 40% of 100%, which when expressed as a decimal is 0.4. Hit return, enter, or tab, and Illustrator does the calculation and the letting change. You could do similar math in the font size field. Let's say we need the font size reduced by one third of a point. Leave the current size in there and then enter minus 0.333. Return, enter, or tab, and done. Clicking the arrows beside the font size field and the letting field too raises or lowers the value by the amount you've chosen in preferences type or by the default of two points per click if you haven't changed that preference. Holding the shift key while clicking those buttons jumps in larger increments, 10 points each to be exact. The addition of that simple modifier key can decimate the wasted time you'd otherwise spend reaching a target size. The same holds true if you put your cursor inside one of those two fields and use the up and down arrows on your keyboard in conjunction with the shift key. For precision sizing by tenths of a point, click on those up and down arrows while holding the Mac's command key or Windows control key. As you can see, clicking the font size field arrows with the command or control key held down resizes the type by 0.1 point with each click. This is great for precision adjustment of type to fit a specific space or height when whole value point changes are too much. Another useful application of the command key on Mac and control key on Windows is resetting the font size back to its default. Hold command or control and click on the font size field icon itself right here to the left of the arrow buttons. The font size will instantly reset to the default size. 12 points in my case. The same trick works on the letting field. Hold command or control while clicking the letting field icon resets letting back to auto, saving you from having to select that option from the drop down list. In fact, the command control click trick works on lots of fields resetting their values back to default.